Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes from The Art of Photography and welcome back to another session of our Photo Friday Q&A where each week I answer questions that you have about photography. And if you have a question you'd like to have considered for a future episode, please leave it in the comments below and I'll see if I can't get to it. And our question today I really loved and I actually had to go some, do some research on it because it's an area of photography that I am not as experienced with. But I do have some examples and I think I can probably help you get into this. But basically Chris Carter has asked a question um, basically, how do you get into NGO photography and how do you get jobs in the NGO um, world? And I had to go look this up because I am not familiar, I've never done any NGO work and it, anyway, to back up and explain, if you're not familiar with what NGO is, basically an NGO is a non-governmental organization. And these organizations basically exist, they, can, they are um, eligible for grant funding, for nonprofit status, and basically if you have an NGO or a non-governmental organization, you have funding available to you where you can do projects on a wide scale that do things like humanitarian awareness, um, a lot of storytelling, and this is a very, interesting career move and I think very viable for people who are interested in doing photojournalism in particular storytelling and I had to research this because I don't have any direct experience with this myself and I had a little trouble coming up with where to start on something like this um, I will put the link in the show notes here but um, it, the website that I found that seemed to be fairly helpful was a website called ngophotography.org and again um, this is not something I have a lot of experience in but there are a lot of tips on here for people, um, you know, tips on what they look for when they're hiring a photographer for NGO work, um, that kind of thing. And so hopefully that could be at least start the research path and getting some experience and understanding of how those things work. The other thing that immediately came to my mind as somebody who thinks more entrepreneurially about things is if you're interested in nonprofit or non-governmental work um, is to come up with projects on your own. And this is a lot of work. Um, it's very tedious. But if you look at people who have had a lot of success with this um, in grant funded types of projects uh, it does make sense and I think it can be very interesting and there are several avenues that you can look at and I'm going to give you a couple people as examples of who I would look for um, first off uh, is a gentleman who does both photography and video movie documentary work that I met a couple years ago at a dinner reception um, by accident uh, a gentleman named Gary Hustwit and Gary is probably best known for the trilogy of movies that he did that were documentaries on um, kind of uh, ready-made objects or you know one was on a typeface so Helvetica was probably the biggest of those movies it was a, essentially a documentary on the typeface Helvetica he did another one called objectified which which dealt with product design and you know then there was urbanized which was the third in this trilogy where he talked about uh, urban planning city planning and the like and all three exceptional documentaries um, when I met Gary I was talking about how did he get into this and at the time he had just started working on a newer project where he was talking about Olympic cities and basically documenting in kind of um, a non-biased way what happens when the Olympics come to a city and you know all these stadiums are built and all these facilities and then when the Olympics are over this city has to care for a lot of structures that were built for a very specific event some cities handle these better than others some cities uh, have allowed these stadiums and structures to go into ruin um, they've had a negative impact financially on the local economy and some of them have flourished and, and been creative and done other things with them it's a very interesting topic and Gary was starting this project and he was telling me about it he's doing a book and you know all these appearances and stuff and I said well you know Gary Gary, how do you get into this? And he said, really all it takes is you need to get an idea and you need to get out and hustle it. And as simple as that is, I think Gary's right. And you know, he, right there, the three films and then this Olympic Cities book, photography thing that he's doing, those are three wonderful ideas for projects. And I talked about this before when I've talked about getting out and trying to stand out in an oversaturated world of photography and documentary film, whatever it is. Um, you know, you need to have that idea and you need to have that seed. And when you have something that is firmed up, that you can believe in, that you can sell, then you gotta do the footwork to sell it. But that gives some people something to talk about. And then you have to work on creating buzz and all the other things that go into that. And, you know, essentially Gary did the last project on Kickstarter. And there are internet um, ways of raising money and raising funding for things. Um, if you're interested in, like I said, it's not NGO work, but if you're interested in non-government work, 
then you need to go meet people who are in that world and start making contacts and start networking and start going to functions and events where you can meet the right people to do that. Um, don't come on too strong, but let them know what it is that you want to do and what it is that you're working on. Um, the other thing too is if you've never done any kind of documentary storytelling work, I want to talk about a photographer that, that I met uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, when I used, uh, we were doing the photography show, which was an audio show that we were doing on iTunes with my friend Wade Griffith, and we interviewed uh, together a photographer that Wade knows, a gentleman named Tyler Sharp. And Tyler is an amazing photographer, and he has done a very quirky and eccentric line of work that has kind of been into that journalism, NGO, storytelling, humanitarian type of venue. And one of his first jobs that he did was he was shooting in Africa with with a safari group, and I asked him how the heck did you ever even get into that? And it was a chance meeting that he had. There is locally in Dallas, there's a Dallas Safari Club. Um, he got in with them and they said, well, hey, we need images and photos, wanna come on a trip? And he was able to make that happen. Um, granted, a gentleman like Tyler who goes into that, you're gonna have to have a lot of flexibility and be ready to travel and go do that. But if that's the kind of work that you wanna do, it's something worth pursuing. So getting out of that photography world and getting into the world of the people who do those projects is probably the best way to start start um, until you can start getting some experience and like Gary Hust would start shaping your ideas and the types of things you want to do into actually formulating actual projects that you can look into getting funded. So anyway, um, I know this goes deeper than what I'm answering here, um, but you know, Google around, start looking into resources. Uh, one last guy, I know this is running long, but I will give you um, an example of is Ken Burns. And Ken Burns is a documentary filmmaker who is known for um, the great baseball miniseries that he did. Um, he's done them on everything, World War II, the Civil War, um, you know, and he's made a career out of doing stuff that's NEH or National Endowment for the Humanities funded projects. And, you know, you can't go to the NEH or the NEA just as an individual and say, hey, give me some money. I want to make a cool documentary about baseball that we're going to run on PBS. <laughs> What you have to do is you actually have to start a nonprofit, which is exactly what Ken Burns did. Um, and Ken started you know, his, his filmmaking company, I believe it was with his brother, I may be getting that wrong. But anyway, the two of them started a group, they figured out what they needed to do to be eligible for funding, and they did all that work to come back around to the idea of making something cool that is useful to people, that is historically relevant, relevant and it's interesting, and he found a way to get it done. So anyway, that's a long spun answer to the original question of how do you go get into NGO photography. But anyway, it's worth looking at. And if you are the type that, you know, you want to make your living doing photography, you want to dedicate yourself to it, you like storytelling, photojournalism type stuff, that's certainly a great avenue to look into. And there can be some pretty interesting projects that could come along there. So anyway, once again, guys, this has been another episode of our Photo Friday Q&A session. Leave a comment, leave a question, and I'll see if I can get to it on a future episode. And once again, thanks for watching. This has been The Art of Photography, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.